Welcome to Writing Black Joy Season 2. I am Sophia Robinson, and I'm a writing coach and an editor and a story listener, as well as the producer of Writing Black Joy, a virtual space that celebrates, centers, and promotes the voices of Black writers and storytellers with joyful and uplifting stories. Here, you'll find conversations with some of my favorite Black writers and storytellers, learn more about their projects and the joy they're bringing into the world, hear more about their creative process, and find inspiration for your own creative ventures, as well as tips and strategies for writing poetry, blogs, creative nonfiction, fiction, plays, and so much more from all types of writers, as well as a sneak peek into the writing life. You can even find your next favorite writer, book, poem, play, or blog. And if you are a Black writer who is looking for a coach or an editor to help you bring your joyful story into the world, then click on my website below to find out how to work with me. In the meantime, let's go to today's guest. Today's guest is Gary Ware. Gary is many things, as you will hear shortly a self-proclaimed creative catalyst, and a corporate facilitator, to name a few. And he's soon going to be adding author to that list. He is also a master at play, and that is something that we dive into as we talk about his upcoming book, which is all about play. Gary and I talked about his writing process and how he completed his playbook as someone who has dyslexia and ADHD and how he brought play into the process. He also talked about seeing the world as a proving ground versus a playground of possibilities. Illustrations for a book that isn't a children's book, working with a graphic designer or a graphic facilitator, and the importance of collaboration in the book writing process. I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. Free. Hello, welcome back to Writing Black Joy. So glad to have you all here. Today I have my friend Gary Ware with me, who is the other Playmeister. I say the other because I had Jeff Harry with me in season one. I'm gonna drop his link in his um link to his episode in the comments. And I've got Gary with me, and uh, these two are the, the people that I think of when I think about play. So I'm so happy to have Gary with me today. I'm going to tell you a bit about him, but just before we do that, if you've wandered on here and you're wondering, what is this? Uh, Writing Black Joy is a web series where I celebrate and center the positive and uplifting stories from Black storytellers, no matter what type of storytellers they are. It could be uh, fiction, nonfiction, documentaries, plays, poetry, anything. So. Um, this is season two. Uh, so glad to have you all here. And I want to tell you a bit about my guest, Gary, today. Gary Ware is the founder of Breakthrough Play, and he's a corporate facilitator, a keynote speaker, certified coach, and self-proclaimed creative catalyst. I do love people who are self-proclaimed anything, by the way. Um, Gary has over 14 years of experience in the corporate world, holding various leadership positions. Being a multifaceted individual, Gary also comes with nearly a decade of experience as a performer in improv theater. After experiencing burnout in his pursuit for success and happiness, he realized what was missing was play. Committing to a life of play is what led Gary to discover his passion for facilitating. Gary uses the power of applied improvisation and other playful methods to assist people in unlocking creativity, confidence, and better communication. He was recently featured as one of the top 100 HR influencers of 2021 by Engagedly HR software platform. When Gary isn't leading workshops or speaking, you can find him learn, learning magic or off on an adventure with his wife, Courtney, and son, Garrett. And I've seen some of this magic. It's pretty awesome. So um, <laughs> I would say if you have the, we're going to obviously get into any social media platforms you have later, but I, I'd follow Gary if I were you, because you get to see magic and that doesn't happen every day. So <laughs> thanks for joining me, Gary. So happy to have you. Yay! Oh, thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited. Let's get into it. Yes, definitely. Now, I know uh, that you have just finished your the draft of your, this is your first book, isn't it? First book. First book, uh, which I'm so excited to dig into a little bit. 
Um, and so I would love to start with you telling me a little bit about that in terms of what inspired you to create it. Uh, I know, you know, I just read your bio and I heard a lot of things, but one thing we didn't hear was writer. So I'm wondering what inspired you to write this book? What inspired you to decide, I think I'm going to do this crazy thing <laughs> and write a whole yes. book. So I never considered myself uh, a writer per se. I am a storyteller. I, I love yes. st telling stories. I love um, helping people, you know, as you, you know, mentioned in my bio, you know, I'm all about helping people realize that the power of play is essential, especially in adults and, you know, being more of the truest version of ourself. Mm -hmm. Last year, I did a 30 day play challenge where yes. I helped, I helped people. Yeah. Using little mini habits to incorporate the power of play into their lives. And after I was done with that challenge, a number of people had said, man, I wish I had a little keepsake so I can remember these practices. And the challenge, it wasn't like I just sort of whipped something together. It took a lot of time and effort of creating the content and all of these things. And someone said, you should put this into a book. And then I was thinking, hmm, interesting. I've, I've never really thought about writing a book. And I always told myself, if I, if I, if the opportunity presents itself and, you know, I, I feel like this is a story that needs to be told, I am all about it. And so yeah. I have to stay true to my word. <laughs> and so I said, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to create a book. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to use this challenge as a premise for this book. And it was one of those things where when you start putting things out into the universe okay. and the universe is like, yep, you need to do that. Things just start showing up. I, I, oh yeah whether you like it or not, it's like now you're on this quest and you have to complete it. You can't, you can't sort of back out now. And so that, that was the catalyst for me writing this book. I love that. And I, uh, I'd love to know, uh, how did you bring the power of play into the writing process? Because the writing process can get so heavy. And I'd love, I'd love to know if you were able to actually do that uh, and bring that play side of you into the sort of discipline required to sit down and write <laughs> word after word after word <laughs> yes and so uh growing up I, I think this is one of the th reasons why i was a little uh sort of opposed to writing a book to that mm. very point of the writing mm. process. the writing <laughs> sitting down you know putting pen to paper or mm -hmm. you know at a keyboard and typing things out growing up as a kid that was the thing that I dreaded the most out of anything, writing papers. Mm -hmm. um, a number of people know this about me, so it's not like, um, it's not like not news, but uh, I am dyslexic mm -hmm. <laughs> and I also have ADHD, which those two combinations make things kind of challenging. And I so as a kid, that was the thing that like, oh my God, it, it, it was just so painful, like literally painful. <laughs> having to sit and Bill. get my thoughts together and mm -hmm. somehow get it out so that it makes sense. And so the thought of writing a, a book was very daunting. Mm -hmm. However, when I read uh, Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Big Magic, Big Magic, she was, yes. Oh, she was talking book. about uh, Brene, uh, Brene Brown had a you know, similar thing about, like she said, it was very painful to write all these books. And I really enjoyed Brene Brown's, uh, you know, books. And she said Brene Brown did something that was a bit un uh, unconventional. And, and then it was like right up my alley. And that was my process, which was this. Um, I, after outlining the book, mm -hmm. I uh, got together with uh, the person that ended up being my editor. And we had meetings every week. Yeah. And she would interview me. And I would tell her stories. So essentially like how we're doing now. Yeah. And then we would transcribe those. And mm -hmm. that became the basis of the book. So it was a party every week. Every week. Yeah, I love that. And I mean, this is something that I've had conversations with people about because I think I have clients who have different 
difficulties with the sitting down and writing part, right? And so what I found, you know, one, we discussed lots of different options. One was like, you could read it out loud and transcribe it, you know, Google sort of like speech to text type of thing. You can, you know, there, there are different ways of doing it. I love the way that you did it because then you actually had that sort of interaction and, and you're telling someone a story. And to me, I find telling someone a story is totally different to like telling it to your phone. <laughs> uh, and so you kind of get that, that fun aspect out of it as well. And, and so, yeah, I love that you kind of just found a way to make it work because I feel like if you feel called, I always tell people, if you feel called to write a book for some reason, like you're going to do it. Um, you have to find a way to do it that works for you. And so I'm really glad you were able to find that way to do it. And so then the editor, I'm assuming, will just edit it to kind of bring it all together and, and kind of pull together so that anybody who's reading it will take away the feet, you know, what you want them to take away from it. So I think yeah, that's, a, that's perfect. Um, yeah. And how, how long did it take? <laughs> so it was, <laughs> the, the process had been, um, uh, someone said, it's like birthing a baby. And, and, and <laughs> again, as a male, I, I do not, I could not say that, that I know anything about that process. <laughs> uh, I just know that it's a journey and it has been nine months. Uh, mm. <laughs> we started <laughs> in April of 2021 mm -hmm. and we're coming along, you know, December, at, you know, as of this recording, December of, yeah. of 2021, and we are on the home stretch. Um, but it was something that again play in the spirit of play is how can you bring some aspect of joy into the work and i always remember what my mom always said um she is an amazing cook one of mm. my favorite recipes for my mom is her mac and cheese uh, Ooh, yeah. and now don't come at if you're listening to this and you're a fan of mac and cheese don't come at me because i i know people like mac and cheese fans are very I'm particular. Very personal thing okay and yes. and everybody has their own yeah i get you my my mom's is like my favorite uh, and maybe because I've, I've grown up eating it but the thing that she said that i take with me that i put into everything is that she i always ask i'm like mom why is it so good she's like i put love into it and i honestly believe because she is doing it for people that she loves and she loves making it that goes into the dish and you can taste it. And I feel like Absolutely. that goes into anything. Um, and so um, I wanted to put love into this, this book. And so I wanted to find a way to bring some sort of spirit of play into it, um, you know, unconventional way of doing it. And, and I did have to overcome like some of that inner critic of, you know, this is not really writing a book because, you know, what they say about authors, they sit down them and they're, I'm like, you know what? Shut up. Mm. This is a story that needs to be told. Yes. Um, and, you know, we're going to do everything necessary to get this out into the world. Um, okay. And, you know, so, so yeah, but the, the cool thing is because it was something that was playful and enjoyable for me, I actually was looking forward to the, the meetings. And then in between the meetings, like I would think of other stuff and we had like, we had like a, a sandbox, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything's like sort of playground metaphors and stuff like that. We had a sandbox it's where, perfect. you know, as I was going through the week and we were working on a certain chapter and things would show up, I would go and put it in there and then we would talk about it and we would like get everything out. Um, and, and yeah, we, we, we got all the stuff out. Um, and then now we, now we're in the challenging period, like the, the editing, the editing mm -hmm. period, uh, which I'm not going to lie, um, uh, it has been challenging. Um, I, I guess in a good way, uh, because, you know, since we're on this sort of like baby metaphor, you know, you get attached to it and, you know, no one wants to hear that your baby's ugly. Um, you know, not no. that anyone's said that my baby's ugly, but again, no. like, these are very personal stories it's, to me. Mm -hmm. And then you get, um, you know, all the criticism, not criticism, it, it's constructive feedback. Like no one, everyone that I put it out to and gave samples to to give me feedback have, um, you know, had nothing but praise. And be, and I had to tell myself, they want this to be good too. Yes. So the, the suggestions that they're giving me is 
you know, their way of saying, we, we want this to come out in the world. We want this to be the best potential product. Gary, you can continue to do better. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah. And I think, um, this is, this is, you know, a, a conversation I have with clients, a conversation that I have, I have had with other editors is that you, when they're your stories, especially because they're so personal to you, there's a lot of background information you already have in your head. You already have all this knowledge. And sometimes the editor's job is to kind of bring that out. So when they're saying to you, like, we need more of this, or we need less narrowing on this, or let's zero in on that. It's not, you have to realize as this is not even a criticism. It's kind of like you are, you've already traveled that journey in your mind. So you miss out stuff and you don't even realize, or you didn't kind of elaborate on something you don't even realize. And so the, the editor is going to be there to kind of, make it exactly what it needs to be for the reader and it's no reflection on your own ability as a writer or a storyteller or whatever the case may be so um you know I, I hope you have someone it sounds like you have somebody who's nice and compassionate and I'm sure it'll be fine but it is it's, it can be a hard process but it's so necessary and I feel like uh that once you've done it it, it makes it even better like you'll be really pleased at how much better it comes out once uh, once the editing has been done yeah so I, I'm super excited. Um, and one thing uh, my editor did, uh, again, in the spirit of play, is she gave me challenges. Mm. So um, as she was going back and listening to the recordings and 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 helping me craft the story, she, like you said, she would realize like something's missing. And it was great to collaborate with someone on it because it was like in real time, I'm getting an outsider's perspective yes. and then they have questions of like, oh, this is missing. So then mm. there will be a challenge for the week of, hey, Gary, you had mentioned this thing in your in your book. We need to go a little bit deeper. By yes. the time we meet next time, could you do a little bit of research on it? Get Give me a few more concrete examples and then we'll pick off where we left off. Like I will, mm -hmm. you know, challenge yeah. complete, you Smart. know, you know, uh, then, you know. All right, we powered up. Yeah, um, next level. Yeah, next level. All right, next level, next chapter. So, yes. Oh, that's perfect. That, that's such a good. I hope this is really encouraging for anybody who feels like they want to write a book and they're not. You know, I, I always used to say like I imagine when I think of writers, I always imagine being out in the woods with like you know your typewriter and your glass of scotch, and uh, I don't drink scotch, <laughs> so I need to find another way to write this book. But uh, I am glad that you found a way that kind of really worked for you. And I think it's it's just a really valuable reminder. I always tell people like, you know, back to the metaphor of being in the cottage by yourself for the scotch. Like I think people think of writing as a solitary process, but you can't write a book alone. Um, I mean, you can if you want to, but I don't recommend it at all. I think writing a book requires a community. Um, and, it, you know, the more you can kind of bring that in, because even if you write the book alone, you still need a community to read it, right? You still it's it's a really sociable process if you can kind of tap into that it can actually be a really fun uh process as well so i'm glad to hear that you were able to bring your sort of love for play into it. i would have been very surprised if you hadn't knowing you but i'm glad you found a way to do it and actually finish a book and and kind of you know achieve that thing that you might have been dreading for a long time so congratulations i can't wait um this is going live as i said to you uh February, March, 2022. And I know your launch date is, is going to be around then as well. So we're going to give people the opportunity to kind of uh, touch base with you so that they can uh, get hold of this book when it comes out. So um, just out of curiosity, because I, you, you know, this is writing Black Joy, and I'm just wondering, why is it important to you that joyful stories are told by Black storytellers? Uh, you know, uh, about black characters, if it's fiction, nonfiction, like, why is that important to you? The big thing for me is representation and growing up and not having it. And that was like the status quo. Um, I didn't think anything of it. Mm. And, you know, yes, every now and then you'll get like, you know, um, these black stories and it's you know, all right. That's great. But the thing that really touches my heart is that next generation. Um, uh, my my niece, who is 15, um, who, you know, sees people that look like her and inspires her. 
and then the impact that it has on her it 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 makes me like realize like yeah we need more of this uh, like i feel like the older generation because again we didn't necessarily have it you know we didn't know what it was like to to have that sort of thing <laughs> but then yeah. when you start to really get a taste and realize that it is influential uh, i think you know again going back and thinking about the people that looked like me that inspired me um you know growing up um you know coach hunt in in middle school um you know mr love in high school you know miss a in, in middle school um you know they reminded me of people in my family and and yeah. and it was an example that hey i can do these things and and i love how you prefaced it with celebrating black joy because yeah. You know, we can easily like go down that that um, you know down that dark path, and and you know, and then we're perpetuating you know stereotypes. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I, I I think it's so important, especially for this newer generation, to um, this newer generation and the sort of greater world <laughs> at large to yes. you know to see you know that you know black people people of color like hey guess what. You know, we're not a one trick pony. No, definitely not. We're not, uh, you know, I, I, I probably mentioned this a million times during this uh, season, but there, the TED Talk I really like is by uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and she talks about the danger of a single story. And you're right, like, you're not a one trick pony. You don't just have one story. You've got plenty, and let's tell more of the joyful ones as well. Um. I know you would have brought a quote. I'd love to hear uh, this quote that's meaningful to you and why you love it so much. Yes. And this has been uh, paramount for me in writing this book. Uh, mm -hmm. I you know, kept referencing it. Um, and it's uh, by Shonda Rhimes. Mm. Um, and it's, when I say no to the things that don't feed my soul, I create more space for the things that do. Mm. I have to say, one of my favorite reads last year was her book, The Year of Yes. I, I really enjoyed that book so, 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 so much. And I feel like she mentioned it in there as well. So, um, yeah, yeah I love that She mentioned it quote. in that book mm -hmm. and her TED Talk. And it may seem counterintuitive, you know, Year of Yes. However, if you, if you read the book, if you see the TED mm -hmm. Talk, yes. you understand that she wants to say yes to the things that are going to lift her up. Yes. And far too often we're saying yes to all those obligations, to yeah. those things that we think we have to do. And then no wonder we feel drained. No wonder we are not rejuvenated. Our, our spirits are not lifted and mm. it can be challenging. Like, especially, you know, as a multi-potentialite, as you know, like myself and someone that, you know, uh, likes to do all the things. Me too. Uh, I, and, you know, I had to realize, I said, you know, am I really enjoying these things or am I just, it's just like a pattern or something like that. So um, it does take some conscious effort to say no to things and to realize what things like feed your soul and, and being okay with those things changing over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, you know, having read the book, I can say one of the, I believe it was a whole chapter she had, was actually about saying no, because the reality of it is, you, like, the two things go hand in hand. You can't, if you say yes to everything, as you said, you will be drained, and you may not actually enjoy the things that might otherwise be enjoyable because you're so busy thinking about the next thing or rushing off to do the next thing. Part of being able to say yes to those things that you enjoy is knowing when to say no. Um, and kind of making that space for the other things. That is, a, I love, like, I, I, I love that book. I'm going to put a link to the book in the comments because I really like it. And anybody who hasn't read it, you must read it. It's, it's an excellent book. Um, so we're going to talk a bit more about your book. Um, do you want to share the name? You don't have to if you don't want to, but. Well, the um, the the title is in flux right now. Okay. Um, but I, I will let you know this uh, for you listeners the the whole point about the book is about the spirit of play mm -hmm. and how when you activate the spirit of play it helps you be the most truest version of yourself it helps you you know unlock creativity joy and just 
you know, reconnect to those around you. So that's what it's about. Yeah. Uh, I had one title and after like sort of going through everything in the book and getting some feedback, I am potentially leaning towards another one. So I don't want to confuse people. Don't, it's fine. Um, the thing I like about that, I, I always tell people like, I, my book was with my editor and it had no title. And so <laughs> she sent it back to me with a, a working title. And I was like, that, you know, when I first thought of, like, I, I always tell the story when I, years ago, I thought I was going to do a TED Talk. No, I'm terrified of public speaking. So why I thought I was going to do a TED Talk is absolutely beyond me. But um, I thought I was going to do this TED Talk. I knew what the name of the TED Talk was going to be. I started writing this talk. I wrote about two paragraphs. And I was like, mm, I'm done now. And a few years later, that was the idea that became the book. Um, but I, I was like, nobody's going to understand what this name, this name doesn't mean anything to anybody but me. So I didn't even put the name on it. I literally sent it. I wrote the whole book, sent it to my editor, no name. Um, and she, when she came up with a working title, it was the same thing that I had come up with. So I was like, that was a confirmation to me. But it also was a reminder to me, like, you don't have to have everything in place to start, right? You think to yourself, like, I've got to have the name, and I've got to have the cover, and I've got to know all these things before I start writing the book. No, you can, <laughs> you can start writing the book. Um, you can finish writing the book. <laughs> There's no name. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of like a really good point to make that like everything does not have to be in place for you to get started. Sometimes you start writing a book about, you think it's about one thing and you get to the end and it's about something else entirely. And that's fine too. So uh, no, no worries if you don't have the name. I'm sure that by the time this goes live uh, and you're like <laughs> days away from publishing, you will have the name uh, yes. and we'll have everything down in the comments. So I'm not worried about that at all. Um, I know you said you had to do a little bit of research uh, for the book as well in terms of uh, examples and stuff like that. What, you know, how did you do that? Was it more research from your own life and experience, obviously as a coach and, and a facilitator? Is it, is there a lot of research out there on play? I, I don't actually know because obviously that's not my field, but I'm curious how you did your research for the book. Yes. Uh, uh, a great portion of the book is my own anecdotal stories of going, uh, and I talk about this in the book, going from seeing the world as a playground of possibilities mm -hmm. as a child and starting work and seeing the world as a playground of possibilities to seeing the world as a proving ground. <laughs> yeah. And feeling like you had, you know, I had to prove myself that I was worthy. And so that is the theme that keeps coming up. And um, so I, I share a lot of these stories. And then um, I have a lot of examples from, um, you know, people that I've coached, uh, people that I work with. And you, um, believe it or not, there is uh, a lot of insights on and, and actual neuroscience and, and studies on the power of play um, mm -hmm. as it pertains to um, us learning things better uh, as it pertains to us connecting. And so uh, I, I reference those as well. Mm -hmm. And um, in sort of uh, rounding out you know, the various chapters, um, I got to discover even more research, which has been is helped my you know, just helped my work um, tremendously. Um, and I was writing this during the global pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> so there was research that was coming out in real time on what happens when we are sitting in front of a computer for hours at a time and not giving us space to play and how it affects our nervous system. So I include those as well. Um, it, I tell people, uh, this is a quote unquote playbook. <laughs> <laughs> on, on how you can shift your perspective. Um, so it's not meant to be a textbook. Um, it's more of meant to be a guide. Um, and so uh, one of the um, awesome pieces of feedback I've gotten thus far, um, and I think is a testament to how I wrote the book, is so it said that they can hear me reading it to them. It's very mm. conversational. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I love it. All right, great. Thank you. Yeah. And I think that comes from exactly, as you said, how you wrote the book sometimes, because I quite often people feel like they speak differently to how they write, especially if your writing was sort of developed at school <laughs> and, you know, you have those sort of rules that you have to follow. Um, I 
I feel like a lot of people do find that disconnect. And so I love that you kind of just skipped <laughs> right over that process and ended up with something that's really, um, really conversational. Um, did you have any obstacles, any other obstacles? We obviously we talked a little bit about your sort of even your process. What other obstacles have you been facing, you know, either with writing it or now? Because I always feel like the, I know you said you're self-publishing and I always, uh, feel like it's and I my book coach my first book she describes it as like having the stove on and all the burners going because you have all these different things that you're trying to bring together so how how are you finding the self-publishing process what obstacles are you facing um yeah I'd love to know a bit more about that yeah so there's two uh, the internal and the external uh, I'll start with the internal first uh because that's something that uh I feel no matter what you're creating, you go through this. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's the excitement phase. And then all of a sudden, you get to the critical phase. And it's just like how it's in my book, like it is play at first, you know, I see the word as a playground, I'm super excited, I'm getting into this. And then there's a moment where it switches. And then mm -hmm. you start seeing the world as a proving ground. Like, oh, is this book good enough? Did I include all the right things? Are people going to buy this? And there was a point in the book like process for me where I, it went from play to work. And then I, and a lot of times it, this happens like a gradual thing and you don't realize it. And until you look back and you're like, wow, this is not fun anymore. Mm. And, and there was one moment where I was not looking forward to our weekly meetings because I was at a, like a, I was a little stumped on on a chapter and I was having some challenges like sort of articulating what my point was and yeah. then it became work. Again, I am so glad <laughs> that I had someone that I was collaborating with on this because when we when we sat down uh, me and Christy um one she's just as playful as I am. Um she was able to snap me out of that out of that funk really quickly and then it became play again and i and i was like you know i got to be vulnerable and honest of like i'm, I'm a little stumped here and then so again yeah we we worked it out i can only imagine if you are isolated you don't have yes. community what you are going through when it when you have that transition from seeing this as a playground of possibilities to a proving ground like I, yeah, I can't fathom that. And so that was the internal challenge that I had to overcome. And again, it's not like, oh, yay, I saw it as a playground again, and then we're better. No, like, it, it have, it's like, so we get it to and, then, and then I'm getting like, I'm getting feedback. And then it's like, oh, no. And then again, I have to again re remind myself and um, even someone like myself, who have been using play as a modality for like a decade. Um, I still have, to, it's a practice. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad that I have these tools at my disposal. So that was the, the first thing. That was the internal challenges that, again, it's an ongoing process. And I love your analogy for self-publishing. Uh, so the, the other external challenges, I didn't know what I didn't know. Yeah. I knew I wanted to go self-publishing route. Um, and when I was working with my editor, she has worked on a number of books. And so she did a very good job of just keeping me focused on task one, which was yes, right. right. It says, you know, let's not even think about the other stuff um, until it's time. I want you to focus on getting this the first draft done. And then I remember the day when she said, okay, Garrett, it's time to start thinking about the other stuff. And yeah, then you're she like, told no. me all the things that like we still had to do. Listen. And I like became so overwhelmed so quickly, like of like, oh, we need to get someone to, um, you know, design the book, uh, like it both, uh, like, you know, for, for paperback and for internal and external mm -hmm. and then, you know, cover. And then, um, you know, we want illustration. So we need to make sure we get that. And then, oh, by the way, you know, we have to, you know, get the ISBN and we have to do this and we have to do that. And then, uh, and then I immediately was like, oh my God. You and know, aren't so you glad you had already finished writing the book by that point? <laughs> yeah, right. And so again, like it goes back into like prioritizing and focusing on one thing at a time. Um, and so again, when you when you work with someone that's a writing coach or you have community, they can talk you off the ledge. They can keep you focused because again, 
if I wasn't, I would probably start researching some of these things. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, I have to do all these things. And I'm not finishing the manuscript. I'm mm -hmm. doing the things that I think I quote unquote need to get done that are not a priority. They're not mission critical right now. And so we set a deadline, hey, let's, you know, by the end of the year, we want to get, you know, the draft all tightened up and everything. And then come January, then we can start focusing on the second part, you know, and the, yeah. the, the launch and, and, and all of those things. And so that's kept me sane. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear so that. That was a, again, a challenge because again, I didn't know what I didn't know. And then mm -hmm. it was a whole nother world to me. And so uh, again, it, this is definitely, you know, uh, um, a plug for people like you that have traveled this path multiple times and can guide you as a Sherpa on this journey. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. And one thing I will say, like kudos to your editor, because I think that is actually why, how I finished my book completely is because I didn't know any of those things either until I was finished the draft. And I'm pretty sure like I'm all, you know, people talk about like, you don't know what you don't know. I was like, listen, I'm kind of glad I kind of stepped forward into the darkness on this one because if I had known <laughs> what was coming, I'm not sure I would have been able to stay focused on finishing the book. I mean, I was really fortunate as well. I had a coach and an editor and they were really good. Um, but that's important. It is important to stay focused on writing the book because anything can happen after that. You know, I know that, you know, sometimes people say like, I'm going to publish, I'm going to self-publish my book in July and sometimes I have to push it back to August or whatever. It's fine. It doesn't matter once the book is done. Right. And so I love that she was able to really keep you onto that task because anything can happen afterwards, literally anything can happen afterwards. Once, you know, you can have it designed, you can have it laid out for print, you can illustrations. I mean, to talk about that because <laughs> I have a to-do list for the end of the year and I've been dropping in random ideas. And one of the random ideas I dropped in was like, adult books with pictures because <laughs> I don't understand why adult books don't have pictures in them. I was talking to, I guess, um, his episode maybe on before yours, Philip Robinson, and he wrote a book, a uh, children's book for his daughters when they were younger. Uh, and we talked mm. about illustrations and stuff like that. And now he's writing um, like an adult version of the same story that he wrote for his daughter. And he was like, well, there are no pictures in it. And I'm like, but why? Because <laughs> it, just, it just occurred to me like, we need, we need more books with pictures in them. So, um, and I, I'm so glad, I'm not even surprised that you guys are going to have illustrations, but we, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But uh, I just want to just say really kudos to your editor. She's, you know, done, obviously done a fantastic job. And um, yeah, a plug for not doing it alone. <laughs> a plug for definitely not doing it alone because I think it can be very overwhelming. Um, and it's, you know, you're far more likely to fish, finish it with someone you know, even with a group with some sort of accountability, um, you know, then kind of getting overwhelmed and kind of uh, not not being able to handle the different skill set that you don't have. Because I think as a, as a writer, even you're not a writer, but as a storyteller, that's the easy part. That's the easy part. The next part is the part that you need to learn. Um, and so that can be, that can, that can feel a bit like work as well. Um, so before I ask you the next question, I want to talk about these illustrations <laughs> because I need to know, is it like, I know you said it was a playbook. Is it kind of like a workbook type of thing with illustrations or is it just that you thought it would be nice to have pictures? I'm curious. I thought it would, again, <laughs> we're, we're talking about play. I, and yeah. I wanted it to be light. Um, and so uh, a friend of mine, again, like I said in the beginning, when I put this out, into the world saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. Um, there were people that stepped up and said, hey, how can I help? And mm -hmm. one of the people that stepped up was my friend, um, Heather Willems. Uh, she is an amazing graphic facilitator. Um, and we've collaborated on multiple projects. And um, her company, Two Line Studios, is the uh was a pre-pandemic was the official graphic facilitator for like um south by southwest so i, mm. I i'm getting like some top-notch graphic facilitators um well my a good friend of mine and so she said hey yeah i would love to collaborate with you on that and so um next phase is uh i already know a few of the concepts that would be great to be illustrated mm -hmm. and uh she uh we're gonna sit together and and sort of brainstorm those and she's going to make 
um, some illustrations and some uh, some graphics again, so it's consistent across the board. Yes, I could have gone and got stock images and, and whatnot, but I, again, it, it's a book on play. It's a playbook. Uh, it's a guide. Uh, it's very light and, and playful. So I, I, why not get someone to to illustrate that? And I love that. And I'm also curious because this is one of the issues I had with my just the cover of my book. There's no pictures in my my not exciting. Although I do have balloons <laughs> in, at the beginning of every chapter, which made me so happy when the lady who laid it out did that. But um, how do you get the images out of your head? and into the other person's ear because this was my problem like I I you know as a writer you think you'd be really good at that but I feel like graphic people speak a different language like they're very visual and you know I I I'm always remember having this experience before I um before I self-published my first book I had this this idea that I was gonna combine some of my blogs posts into a book and I wanted the cover and I hired someone online to do it. And I, I thought I'd sent them exactly what I wanted. And they sent back the cover and it was exactly what I asked for, but it was not what I wanted at all. <laughs> so I'm curious. Um, I know you guys may not have started the process yet, but I'm curious, like any ideas about how you're going to get, I mean, you're going to draw some sketches yourself. Like, how are you going to get it out of your head and into to the, the graphic language? Yes. So, um, uh... <laughs> Uh, I know quote unquote what I want, um, but to your point, the there's a difference between when you hire someone and then they're it's almost like a short order cook where you tell them I want it to look exactly like this, and then they're like, all right, this is what you asked for, and it may not necessarily be what you need. And in the spirit of collaboration, um, I am open to uh, sort of interpretation. And so I want to sort of talk it, talk it through and say, Hey, look, I, I want, I have this concept, um, that I'm talking about in the book It's a little bit complex. How can we help people see this in a graphic, a graphical way mm. and trusting the artist to come up with something that is going to complement that. Um, and yeah, and it's, and it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, okay. and yeah, it, it's. It's a challenging process, uh, you know, of, of trying to, you're right, you have these words in your head and you want them illustrated. You you want a graphical representation of that. You know, what is it? What does it look like? Granted, I'm doing nonfiction. <laughs> so a lot of the stuff that is going to be uh, illustrated, um, you know, are um, like sort of chart type stuff. And, but then there's some things that are like more of concepts. And so uh, I'm excited to see uh, what what Heather um, you know comes up with. Comes um, up with yeah. One of the good things about working with a uh, graphic facilitator is they are able to in real time do sketch notes that mm. are you know and you you've probably seen these where you know um, you know again they have them like at South by Southwest at you know TED Talks where it's someone's talk yes. in a a graphical diagram i have seen it it's amazing so she has the she is she is a she has a superpower of doing that so i'm confident that whatever i sort of throw her way she can find a way to represent that in mm -hmm. in a graphic form and i think i think that's a really valid point in that having that collaboration and that trust with the person because funny enough the person who ended up designing my book cover uh, was my best friend now she is not a graphic designer but she she read the book she knows me and she kind of just came you know she was like i'm gonna send you 20 ideas pick your top eight and then she took the top eight and then she sent me 20 more ideas and we just kept kind of back and forth like that and eventually she found like the perfect one um but a part of that came from the fact that i trust her immensely to kind of interpret what she read because she read the book so she, she had a, a, an early copy and her knowledge of me and what i'm like and you know like that's where the red balloon came from and all of that because that was her kind of interpretation of what i was and so i think I, I'm, what i'm hearing is like you have that trust in this person to come up with their own ideas and then show you something that you might not actually have come up with yourself but might be even better than anything you could possibly have come up with yourself because that was that was 
for me, when I had the internal layout of my book, I, I gave it to somebody and she was collaborating with my book coach at the time. And I was just like, don't ask me any questions. And what she came up with was actually a thousand times better than if I had told her <laughs> what I wanted. And I love that. That was that's such a good point that like, you have to sometimes be able to trust the, that person to come up with something that may be even better than what you might come up with yourself. Give up control. Give <laughs> yeah. up that Which control. can be challenging. Uh, again, because this is, you know, you know, I, again, we use these terms and it makes us so attached to it. This is your, your baby and stuff like that. And, and it may be challenging because uh, again, this is very vulnerable and you, you, again, that is coming from the lens of seeing the world as a proving ground. It's a very mm -hmm. like sort of scarcity based mindset. Whereas if you see the world as a playground, you see everyone as a playmate, you see everyone um, willing to collaborate. And then the end result is going to be better than, you know, had you just said, do exactly as I say. And, yeah. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. Because like you said, people are going to interpret it differently. And that's good. Yeah, I love that. That is good. It is. I think it's that sort of acceptance and you said and kind of letting go of the control and realizing that somebody out there may have a, an idea that you may not have thought about, but it's like, yeah, I love this. This is perfect. This is exactly, exactly telling saying it's telling the story exactly the way I would love it to do. So that is perfect. Um, what has your proudest moment been so far in the process? I know you're not quite finished yet, but what has it been so far? The first thing that comes to mind is the consistent consistency. Um, I was pleasantly surprised at how uh, I was able to, again, go through this process. It's a journey. Um, now, it was designed that way. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, looking back, uh, duh, like, you know, I, I set all these on my calendar. I, you know, I showed up. Uh, but again, just so proud that um, I was able to show up the way that I did, even <laughs> when it was challenging and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I got another beauty. And so that made me very proud. And then the other moment was, it, it was a very uh, touching moment where um, I gave a few people some chapters to look over. Um, and, and I did it based on what I thought they, you know, because I wanted to, you know, get some honest feedback. And some people said, oh, yeah, Gary, I'd love to, you know, read a few things. And I said, all right, um, I'm going to give you this chapter. I, I think it might resonate with you. And I, I had someone write, reply back and said, wow, Gary, that chapter is exactly what I needed to hear in this moment nice. how the hell did you do that and i was like again you, you talk I about have no like, idea. I, I love i love magic that was a magical moment that i did not orchestrate and it's just a, a sample um you know that i'll give uh, the people listening uh just a little tease um yes the book is about play and the book is about um you know stepping into you know the playground uh but it's also about being honest and i have a chapter about um, you know, I have these, I call them play virtues. Um, and, you know, these are, um, you know, different practices, you know, that can help you uh, sort of reclaim, reclaim, you know, your, your playful instinct. And, and one of them is, I talk about how it's okay to be a mess. You just can't stay there. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, just sit with whatever, you know, whatever showing up. And again, you know, it, using the spirit of play, um, you know, it's okay. You know, it's okay to, you know, one day show up and say, you know what? I'm not the best that, 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 you know, that I'm not at my best today and that is okay. I'm going to allow myself to not do that. Tomorrow's a different day. However, if you see the world as a proving ground, you don't allow yourself to have those moments because you think you need to present a certain way all the, time, all the time, every day, always. Mm -hmm. And so again, having my friend um, come back and, and tell me that uh, was one, and, and I knew she was being honest. It wasn't like one of those things, like when you when you send your mom something and your mom's like, oh like God, this is so great, great. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this was like very honest, uh, like very caring uh, feedback. Yeah, and I felt I love that. So yeah. Yeah, that's so amazing. It's going to be such a good book. I can't wait for it. Um, tell me, what advice would you give somebody who is going on this journey? And it could be 
a fellow storyteller who doesn't see themselves as a writer, or it could be, you know, uh, a, a creative, what sort of advice would you give someone who, you know, is a fellow creator who's on this journey? Your story needs to be told. And I know that is sounds cliche. And I know we have, we have, um, you know, numerous people have said it. But imagine this. Imagine that you didn't tell this story. And imagine if it had the potential to help someone. Now, I'm not saying because it's a self-help book or something like that. But imagine, you know, that it didn't have the potential to touch someone and bring them joy. And we lost that light because they didn't get a chance to hear that message. How would you feel? Yeah. That would that would crush me. So use that as inspiration to put your story out into the world. Good. That is very good advice, I think. Um, so just to kind of get to the wrapping up point, what type of thing do you enjoy reading or watching or listening to? I'd love to know uh, what's, I know you may not be reading anything right now because you're in the middle of editing and writing, but you know, in general, uh, we, we know you like Star Wars. Oh, I knew yes. that. <laughs> what else yes. do you like reading and watching and listening to? Um, so uh, I, I love fantasy. Uh, so as far as books and stuff like that, uh, I love I love fantasy um i because again I, I love magic i'm a big fan of magic and something that i'm reading right now that actually like i have this belief that anything that you like sort of steep yourself in like shows up in other areas so um a book that i'm rereading just because i was like you know i just need to some light and you know just sort of take my mind off a of thing mm -hmm. um is a book called the night circus by uh, author <gasps> Aaron, Aaron Morgenson. Morgenson. this is my favorite book of all time oh my right? gosh I the actually, book is amazing. Oh, I gave that. My sister just finished it. Uh, the one uh, I've got a sister who's very pregnant right now. By the time this comes out, she won't will no longer because she's due in January. But I gave her the. I gave it to her. Literally, I stayed up all night reading that book. That book is so good. Oh my yes. gosh, the Night Circus. It's the best. Yes, it's an amazing book. And so, get this. Not only do I have uh, the book, the paperback that I'm reading, I also have the audible version and I'm listening to it as I read it because the the narrator does like all these voices. And so anyways, so I love, you know, allowing myself to sort of be transported into another world. Mm. Um, and um, I find that in stuff like that, like it, it shows up in my work. Like I, I, I tend to be a little bit more whimsical. I like to delight people and stuff like that. Um, you know, the mystery, mystique and, and stuff like that just sort of shows up. Uh, again, I have this belief that you are the average of the five people and things that you surround yourself with. So, um, you know, so yeah, fantasy and, and adventure, stuff like that, uh, amazing. Um, yeah, I, I love Star Wars. Uh, and, you know, I like sort of uh, action stuff like Marvel. Um, I like to see myself too. in that. Um, you know, again, uh, I, I love magic. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I'm an amateur magician. And, you know, since this is uh, celebrating, you know, um, uh, Black voices, uh, one of, like, my favorite right now um, uh, magicians, um, his name, uh, oh, my gosh, um, his name is Eric Jones. He was okay. on um, uh, uh, America's Got Talent. Uh, mm -hmm. He was on... Um, uh, Pin and Teller Fullest, if you're, if you're into like sort of magic and stuff like that, he is an amazing black um, musician, uh, magician, I keep getting those words mixed up, magician based out of Philadelphia here in the US and such mm -hmm. a humble person. So um, I love following all of his work and it, it again gives me a moment to like suspend disbelief and just be transported. Okay, I'll see if I can put a, a link to any of that in the in the show notes, that'll be awesome. But yeah, I, I love the Night Circus. I'm so I'm glad you're rereading it. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Perfect. So where can the audience find you and also maybe jump on the waiting list for your book? If you've got one, by the time this comes out, you, you, mm -hmm. I'm assuming you will have something that I can yes. link in the, 
in the comments. But um, is there anywhere else you would like people to follow you in the meantime? Is there an Instagram? Is there, I know, I know where we connect is actually off of uh, traditional social media. We're uh, on the Mighty Networks. But yes. uh, is there anywhere else people can find you? Yeah. Uh, I'm on, uh, so my website, breakthroughplay.com, um, you know, there'll be a link in the show notes where you can Absolutely get on the waiting will. list for, for the book. Um, but I'm also on, um, I spend a lot of time on Instagram, um, at Gary Ware, my full name. Um, and if you, uh, are in the quote unquote business world, I'm also on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I, I'm playful everywhere. So, uh, you know, uh, I try fun. to be all Gary all the time, no matter what platform. <laughs> I'm on. So those are the main places where I like to uh, hang out. So feel free to come and say hi. Absolutely. And hopefully get to see some of that magic. I saw a card trick the other day. I won't say anything else more about it, but it was fun. I loved it. It was really, really good. So I would say follow Gary. You will, you will have a lot of fun doing that. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading this book. I can't wait. And um yeah, thanks for joining me. Good luck with the rest of the process and congratulations. It's gonna be it's gonna Thank be good. You. It's gonna be a good a good book to have brought out into the world. So Yay. thanks for being my guest and everyone, happy reading. Thank you for joining us today. You can find out more about our guests in the notes below. And don't forget to hit subscribe to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss new episodes when they drop. And if this has inspired you to get your own writing project into the world, click on my website below and learn how you can work with me as a writing coach or an editor. Until next time, I send you big love from a small island.